Hey everybody, I'm Miss Audrey from the Fairfield County District Library and I'm at our downtown Lancaster branch and um, I'm here today to talk about some really awesome books that have come out this past summer that you might have missed due to everything. So I'm going to dive right in and get started. These book talk uh, programs that I'm doing are sort of like little book commercials. They'll be longer than some of the other ones that we do, but hopefully not too long, and hopefully you'll find some stuff that you like. I'm going to start with a couple of books for younger readers, or maybe if you have some str more struggling readers at home that they might be interested in. And I'm going to start with um, one of my favorite new series, and it's the most recent edition in this series. It's called the Unicorn Rescue Society series by Adam Gidwitz and other authors. In this series, two main characters, Elliot and Yuchenna, run into an eccentric professor and a magical creature in the first book. And then they become members of a secret unicorn rescue society, which goes around the world rescuing and protecting magical creatures. And it has some environmental and conservation messages worked into the plot, um, but it's not super heavy handed. Um, it's very funny and it's very fast moving and nothing too scary, but definitely very exciting. And if you look inside the book, you can see there's spot illustrations. There's lots of white space. So it's very friendly for your, say, Magic Treehouse reader set, uh, people who are reading at about that reading level. Um, and since the books come from around the world, one of the, th or the creatures in the books come from around the world, um, the author, Adam Gidwitz, um, writes with authors from those different global cultures and to make sure that he's getting the details about those different creatures correct, which I think is awesome global representation. So this most recent book is called The Madre de Aguas de Cuba, and he co-wrote it with Emma Othagai. I might not be pronouncing that correctly. Um, and how cool is that though? So he used it, he co-wrote it with an actual Cuban author. And they are all illustrated by Hatem Ali, who is also a really good illustrator. So that's a really cool series there. We also got a couple new awesome choose your own adventure books in this summer. These are great options for reluctant readers or struggling readers. You cho choose your own adventures are good choices because they're a little less daunting than traditional novels. Uh, the sections are chunked up small, so you're not reading as much at a time, but of course then you wanna see what would happen if I had chosen the other option. So you're still doing a lot of reading, just you know, chunked up into sections. And of course it's also fun because you get to choose your own adventure. You get to kind of write your own book and follow your own path. So the two new Choose Your Own Adventure series that we got were the could you survive series which is this one these are extra fun because they include information about different time periods folded organically into the plots and the plots are very very plotty in some options the readers don't survive they meet um prehistoric animals sometimes they get eaten sometimes they fall to their doom all sorts of very exciting things happen sometimes they get stuck back in time sometimes they wind up coming home, it all just depends. Basically, this is nonfiction meets survival adventure genre, so I have a feeling that these will go out like hotcakes. Um, this is Jurassic period, but we have Ice Age, New Stone Age, and the Cretaceous period as well. So that is option number one. The other new Choose Your Adventure uh, quartet that we got in, this one, are. They're fantasy light. They're based off of fairy tales. This one is the Frog Prince. These are pretty funny. They're more funny than survivalist, like the other one. And some end with some pretty dire consequences. Like in this one, one of the endings is 
A prince who's a real jerk gets turned into slime by a fairy, but the prince's father, the king, gets annoyed at the fairy for doing it, so the fairy loses her job as protector of the forest. And the way it's written, it's, it's honestly really funny. So there's all sorts of twists and turns in, in this one that I think will keep the kids engaged, and they're pretty unexpected. So um, the other options on this one, I forget exactly which ones we had, but I know one of them was The Little Mermaid. We got a few, we got four of these ones as well. So for slightly longer books, we have, for books that are more, say, fourth to sixth or seventh grade level-ish, because every kid learns at their own speed, I am going to start by talking about some books in the Rick Riordan Presents imprint. So Rick Riordan, he's the guy who wrote the Percy Jackson and the Magnus Chase series. He decided to start his own publisher imprint focusing on books um, by authors from different cultures, uh, focusing on mythologies from those cultures from around the world. So instead of just Greek gods and monsters, you have Korean ones or African American ones, or in this case, you have Native American ones. This is Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Um, and it's about um, the mythology this is based on is the Navajo or the Diné, as um, again, I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing that right. I'm trying. Um, as they call themselves, they call themselves, hopefully, I'm saying it right, the Dine. There was a little bit of controversy over this book. I do have to say that. We learned that after we ordered it for the collection. The author herself is Native American, but she is not Navajo. Her husband is, and she has worked in the area of Navajo law and justice for, I don't know, a decade plus. So she's very, very familiar with Navajo customs. She had members of the Navajo Nation read this before she put it out. So obviously there's lots of members of the Navajo Nation who think it's great and they love the representation and that Navajo kids will be able to read this and see themselves in it. But there are some members of that community who are annoyed that their holy people are being portrayed as fictional characters in a work of fantasy and who are annoyed that some of their customs are and religious practices are being shown in a wider context because it's usually kind of a very private thing. So there's a little bit of controversy going on over it. I decided to err on the side of um, more representation is better than no representation. And it's very hard to find Native American, modern Native American children in fantasy. So um, I decided to go ahead and showcase this book partly because it's really catchy and I think kids will really like it, but I also figured it wouldn't hurt to fill you in on some of the background. Anyway, the main character, that's her, realizes that she can see monsters, which is how she knows that her dad's boss is really bad news. Within the first few chapters, her dad is kidnapped. She and her best, she and her little brother, who's 10 months younger than her, and her best friend are off on a quest to secure monster fighting weapons to rescue her dad, kill the monsters, and save the world like you do. The book is based on the DNA stories of the hero twins and there's a lot of other really cool stuff involved. The world building is great. The plot is really fast. I particularly like the main character. She's a really great mix of she's tough but she's pretty vulnerable at the same time in really believable ways and she's pretty temperamental. Her best friend is like a budding genius librarian type. He was by far my favorite character. I really liked him. And he was a biracial Navajo in Native American, which again is really hard to find in literature. So that was really cool. This book just plain has a lot of kid appeal and I think a lot of readers will like it. However, if this particular one doesn't float your boat, either just because of what you've heard now or maybe the controversy has you rethinking it, there are tons of other books by other authors in the imprint. A book came out last year called Tristan Strong um, Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbalia, and it won universal acclaim pretty much um, and won some awards. The sequel is coming out in October, 
This is an advanced reader copy. It's an unedited version of the book. They send it to libraries so as sort of an advertising ploy. Uh, this is the sequel, Tristan Strong Destroys the World, is coming out soon. This one's really cool. Also, this one came out in August. This is, again, an advanced reader copy. Our real copy is on order. We should please get it soon. Everything's a little messed up right now because that's the way the world is. It's called Paola Santiago in the River of Tears. It's by Taylor K. Mejia. And it's based off of Latin American myths of La Llorona and so forth. And I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but it looks really, really cool. The fourth book in the Erusha uh, Quartet is coming out this year, and it's based on Indian legends. India as in the, the subcontinent of India. And that has been a bestseller for several years now. Those are all in the same imprint. So if you're interested in world mythology, you want to check out some of these books. Um, you can go to our library website. You can type Rick Riordan Presents into our search bar, and you will get a list of all of these books available. Um, and you'll be able to pick whichever ones are of interest to you. They're all really, really good and very, very cool. And this is the only one so far with controversy attached. So give them a try. So, changing gears completely, um, I get very, very suspicious when publishers compare a new book to other best-selling books that have already come out because publishers have a job. They're trying to sell books. So when I saw in a review somewhere, I read a lot of reviews. I honestly can't remember where I read this one. Comparing a book that was coming out to both Diary of a Wimpy Kid and Wonder. I was really suspicious and I thought I need to read that book because I'm not 100% sure I'd buy it. Well, I read the book and they were right. That's a really good combination. That's a really good comparison. And that book was Wink by Rob Harrell. So the main character of this book, Ross, is also the narrator and he has eye cancer. You would not think that this would be a funny book. This book is hilarious. This eye cancer is affecting him physically, personally, and socially, and that's what the book is about. I usually have a really low cringe tolerance. I, I can't stand books or movies where the characters are really, really embarrassed. I did not think I was going to be able to finish this. It just made me read it faster. It felt so real and I felt so strongly for Ross, and somehow it was honestly funny that I was able to get through it and I loved every minute of it. It's just done so well, and with so much sympathy for the main character, um, I just loved the whole thing. It was really, really well done. It's clever, it's thoughtful, um, and in addition to dealing with cancer, Ross is also learning how to play guitar. He loves to draw. He's And he's trying to figure out the difference between sticking out because of really rotten circumstances and standing out because of choices that you make, which I thought was a really cool distinction to be talking about. The author himself, Rob Harrell, um, had eye cancer and went through treatments for it in 2006. So all of the medical procedures in the book are accurate and they're based off of what he went through himself. And that definitely added a level of realness to the book. Um, and also in the book, there's uh, spot art of Ross's character, Bat Pig, um, as well as mini comics which were hilarious. I personally wished that there were more Bat Pig comics throughout because they were very clever and incredibly well done. That's probably actually my biggest critique of the book is that there wasn't more Bat Pig. Um, so yes, this is, this was a good book. And I think a lot of kids will we'll really like this book. Or if you are a teacher and you're looking for good read-alouds, check this one out. I think you'll go for it. So we are now going to turn to my absolute favorite kinds of books, the graphic novels. Yay! 
I could talk about these all day, guys. So I only was able to pick three and it was so, 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 so hard. I'm going to start with the latest book by the graphic memoir queen herself, Raina Telgemeier. This book actually came out right before the library closed due to the coronavirus. A lot of you have probably already heard of it. I just want to make sure you all know we have it. It's Guts. Um, so, um, what's this one about? So, well, it's about Guts. In this book, uh, Raina Telgemeier discusses her history with stomach issues and anxiety in a calm, relatable, funny way that even kids who don't have mental health or stomach related issues will understand. And for kids who do have similar issues, it will mean a whole, whole lot to them. It also talks a lot about coming, common coming of age issues, especially about those with school and family and friends. You know, it's a Raina Telgemeier book and it's fabulous. It's her best one yet though. It's it's amazing. I recommend this one for all readers between the ages of 8 and 88, and I think most of them will like it. So just read it. That's my recommendation there. Um, my next one requires a little bit more explanation. This is another best-selling series. This is the, the latest installment of another best-selling series, rather. Um, this is Major Impossible by Nathan Hale, and it's from the Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales series. If you've not heard of the Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales series, allow me to fill you in. The author took for his inspiration the actual historical figure of Nathan Hale, who was a Revolutionary War uh, patriot who was captured and executed by the British. In this fictionalized history book, However, he fell into a magical history book and he is delaying his own execution by telling stories of American history that haven't happened yet. And that's sort of the framework for the whole series. In this particular installment, he is um, talking about the first white guy and his team of people exploring the white can or the Grand Canyon, the first white guy team to explore the Grand Canyon. And like a lot of the stories in the Hazardous Tales series, it's one this history major has never heard of before. And it's a really good series. Um, this series also covers the Alamo, the Ironclads from the Civil War, the Donner, Den the Donner Party Expedition, blah, blah, blah. say that five times fast, Donner Party Expedition and a whole lot more. It's a popular series with excellent information. The kids have a lot of fun with these and learn a ton about American history. And the series is not afraid to tell the down and dirty details that the kids just glory in and I glory in too, frankly. These are great. These are fabulous. Again, read them. Any kid who likes humor, who likes action, who likes adventure, they will like these a whole, whole lot. So um, I would recommend that if you're going to try this series though, that you should start with One Dead Spy first. That is the first book and it explains the frame story behind the series better than I just did in my blurb. Um, but after that, they can be read in any order that you like. But starting with the first book first might make a little bit more sense. My last and final book is the one that's the hardest to explain. It is the last book again in a series. The series is called Hilo and the last book in the series is called All the Pieces Fit. And this series is really hard to explain. It's called, uh, the author's name is Judd Winnick and it's a best-selling series. This also came out in February, but again, I, I, I know how many kids like this book and I just want everyone to know that we have it. Um, how do I explain this series? It is one of the funniest things I've ever read, but it also has you at the edge of your seat at the same time. There is not very many books that can have you biting your nails because the world's about to end and laughing out loud at the same time. And that's what this book did for me. I was crying at the end of it actually, and I don't generally cry. Uh, it's an amazing ending to an amazing series. Uh, if your kids like action, adventure, 
friendship, everything. This book has everything. Um, it has space travel, magic, deadly, ro ro deadly robots, friendly robots, warrior cats, sacrifice, re betrayal, redemption, everything. It has everything. Holy mackerel. These books are awesome. You should definitely give them a try. I really cannot actually tell you anything about the plot without spoiling anything. <laughs> That's the problem. Just if you have kids who are even slightly interested in graphic novels, you should definitely try Hilo. They're very, 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 very good. So I could keep talking about new books for days, especially our graphic novels, but I can't. Happily, I intend to do book talks about once a month for the next little while. I'm also hoping to put a poll up on our Facebook page um, and where you guys can tell me what kind of books would be of use to you. I've listed various kinds of themes and topics like books about civil engagement or elections or mindfulness and mental health or funny stuff, feel good stuff, and also an other category where you can tell me what you would like me to talk about. So feedback is great. I would love to know what you would like me to talk about next. Uh, so just let me know and I'll be in touch. Have a great day guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.